Um, thank you all for coming. In the middle of bloody summer, I'd have more to be doing than coming to do bloody poetry reading, but thank you all for coming. Uh, you know, obviously you aren't good enough to be invited to a wedding, this is wedding week. <laughs> how, did the, how did the local counselor got out of it, I don't know what her excuse would be. Take a photograph, put it in there during the week, and just say, why wasn't she at the local weddings? Or was she already? Maybe she was, I don't know. Yeah, she, is, she goes to 40 bloody community, community council <laughs> meetings and community uh, events, I don't know. Every week? Every week. Every week, every bloody day. You know? That's what, that's what politics is about. But um, on a more serious note, thank you all for coming. Uh, Jenny, thank you. Words of wisdom. Uh, should have got them two hours ago, but thank you. Um, <laughs> Uh, um, our compare. This is this is an extension of Noel's night. We were um, doing a little booklet, um, which is for sale through Europe um, retailers in the town over the last couple of years. But that was that was in preparation for tonight uh, because after ten years, we said we better um, kind of get her poetry going. Uh, after all, she was. Um, you know, not what the boys were saying. She was like emerging poet of the year in '94 before her book came out. So the judges noticed from a manuscript, and it really was a manuscript. And this is what was given to us lately: was a manuscript. And myself and Liam had to knock the corners off it in consultation with Tony and whoever else was in the pub at the time. <laughs> Let's be honest, you know. Liam hasn't set foot in my house and I don't know where he lives, you know. You know. <laughs> I wish I could bloody do some of the bloody work I was in at the back there, Hannigan. I wish I could make things, something as successful of my own bloody work as this book. Um, well, Jesus Christ, I'm 41, like, you know, <laughs> dying me hours. But this. With Liam, I met him, he had a coffee, oh, and I had a pint. Tony had a coffee too, uh, if anyone's wondering. But this didn't take that many beers, at least by the time you left. By the time I got home, Karen, it was a lot more beers. Um, so anyway, I just see the evil eye coming down from Baller, <laughs> Baller Divine. Um, Ah, I love her, I love her really. She's, she, she'll have to edit this if I don't put them speed up and anyway dinner is served. So um, I have to say Liam has really worked on this. Liam is the main editor so I've been signing away yesterday and today since the book's arrived and if anyone was looking at the Facebook page, Karen's face dropped when a lorry pulled up outside and 2,000 books came out in a pallet. So, I think my brother was ringing for a cut of the deal. I said, too late now, you know. Alan? Alan. Uh, both Alan and George, I haven't heard from them in a while. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit late to be in. It was an investment opportunity right up to Wednesday, but it's gone now. Well, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, Liam, uh, as he, Liam is a well-known author and uh, Liam McGinley from Glen, well-known author and poet. So it was a privilege for me to uh, work with Liam and w we did have a publishing press who were great and worked with us at the very beginning. But we had to make an, a kind of a decision to hold on to what we wanted in this book. And you know, when you have the book, you'll see it's the Ungrateful Princess, you have the Ivory Tower, um, there's a little theme going right through it uh, in the 70 poems. Um, there's the drawbridge. There's a couple of poems like that. They had to stay together. And during the editing of the book, some poems were thought maybe to be left out and condensed. So we decided we would run with it. Some of the poems are actually like, uh, I know everyone doesn't have the book, but I'm just going to mention one poem in particular. Um, Monumental Moments, page 12. Uh, that is not like Noelle's normal writing. That was a bit like what she rebelled against. But after all, Noelle, she might have been 43 when she passed away. Young, young for me anyway. Um, young for a lot of people. But Noelle had condensed so much by 43. It, it did help our grieving process that she had five kids, you know, a marriage, a million pound company. Um, Still borrowed twenty quid off you quicker than I borrowed twenty quid off her. <laughs> but uh, she, you know, she did a lot uh, and left very little. I'm only joking. This is what she left. This is our legacy. This is why we're here tonight. But monumental moments is a poem that 
even if people don't like the darker parts of Noel that you've intimated about, monumental moments, uh, which I might read actually if you would indulge me for a second. Um, it, 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 it's a wee bit long, well, everything's one page, but it shows a different side to Noel. Had she lived a bit longer, perhaps she would, um, you know, maybe done a little bit more. She rebelled against anything with a bird, a sky, a tree, anything like that. But this is a bird, a sky, a tree, a lake. It's a night of love and passion. I don't know which of the boyfriends are here, because it's certainly not me anyway, anyway, because you know, he was married at this stage. <laughs> Again, or at least dating. But um, I don't know. Um, I, when I was doing editorial control over this, uh, I'm embarrassed on page 18, I think it is. Uh, my wife won't be impressed about this. We're all, we're all given a poem. Jenny, fair dues to her, wrote her and book, Barrison poem. You know, down, I would have read it about half, I would have wrapped that tune, you know? You know? Downloading like eggs, you know, at happy hour, motherfucker. But um, my one is like, you know, walls condom thin or something to that effect. It's bloody awful. But anyway, that's more, you know, I know when I was chatting to Charlie about this, I said, how do you feel about us, you know, digging the shit back up? He says, uh, is it any worse than the first book? I said, you know what, screw up a lot. I don't even think she'd fucking like shit anymore in this book. <laughs> he said, okay. <laughs> what will my other wife say? <laughs> I'll say it quietly, she won't fucking hear <laughs> Excuse my language. Yeah, uh, Karen is recording this. Um, so, uh, so I was going to give you a lovely poem there, which I will do. Um, and it, you know, the boys have dwelt upon what Noel is known for. But this is a lovely, this is um, a night down in Mayo in Lockhart. The Hawthorne's crowning glory frames the Mayo cottage where the swallow's swift return mirror, mirrors our migration from too long a winter. Giddy with chatter, sleepless mania, we rush nowhere, spooning freshly made fantasies into half-open mouths. In honour of the murdered parts of our once vibrant selves, I put on a great show scripted by my own need to be loved. For years you have waited for someone like me, and though blinded by my exuberance, I was not the nymph you hoped for, but a woman worth more than the measure of your plans. Having denounced the night, we slept between two blankets of light, like a shy lover, Lake Coral, slowly revealing, revealing her total splendor, stepping out from behind a loosely worn garment, garment of mist. We stood there stunned, staring at the brazen beauty. And that, I think, is About a powerful poem for, uh, that, you know, that Noel wrote probably 2000, late 90s, early 2000. I don't know if we actually read that poem before, um, and it just shows you what maybe direction she could have went in. But she still, you know, jizzed up the bloody lake car up, and I mean, so her to my mother, you know, it wasn't just a lake, <laughs> it was a shy lover. Um, so, I, in penning today, I did do one post it, um, which means I took it serious. Um, for Bruce's. Uh, Wedding in March, we had four posters. Four big day. Um, <laughs> what what I can say is, I'm glad actually. I was going to have a lion this morning. I'm going to have a lion tomorrow, but I had a very in, in, important lady on with me this morning. Uh, and I'll tell you who she is. But we were discussing what you're going to say later. I said I don't know, but it'll come to me later. So there was, when we were having this conversation, we were. She was saying when she came to Gilly Wags about 30 years ago, they said the Sharkies, uh, she didn't know what to make of it, but they just said there's a streak in them, an artistic streak, be careful, you know? It's like an affliction, you know? And don't go catching it now, you know? Because no one else will fucking talk to you unless you're up in the sail end on a Friday night, you know, once a month. But uh, my mother was afflicted by poetry. I think Tony may have dwelt 